show a technique with you that I discovered by accident really when I ordered some papel picado off Amazon. Now, I've bought this in Mexico before, I've ordered it before and I use it as collage. It's cut tissue paper. However, when this set arrived, I just hadn't read the description properly and it was plastic. I couldn't collage with it. So I set it aside and skip forward a few months, a great friend of mine, Kerry, came to visit. We had an art play date and I started playing with my jelly plates and I remembered that I had this cool plastic Papo Picado. I can't really call it that because it's that means it's paper. This is plastic Picado. <laughs> so I thought, I wonder if I could use this as a stencil. And of course I can. And because of the type of plastic, it's actually perfect as a stencil, especially for my jelly plates, because it kind of sticks to it, as you can see. So I just placed the banner onto a cleanish <laughs> jelly plate. This is the Jane one, of course, and put a little bit of paint down. Really, I'm sort of experimenting to see what will happen. I put down three colors. I've got a green, a beautiful turquoise, and a lovely a phthalo blue. These are all from my collections. They're all matte acrylic paints. For me, that's very important because of what comes after I've done my printing. So I've put down my colors straight over the banner and look at that. I'm going to put that over just another jelly plate print that I have in an altered book. That's all about Freddie Carlo. And the wonderful thing about the Jane Davenport uh, collaboration with Jelly Arts is my plate is thin out so I can have three, sometimes four, of my jelly plates in my journal at once, which honestly, transformative for me. I love this type of printing. I don't like waiting for things to dry before I use my plates again. So I have several on the go at once. So while the first one is drying, I can just keep going. I've put down some various pinks from my sets and uh, ooh, got it over a jelly plate that was already uh, green, just had some leftover green paint on it that I hadn't used up. I'm going to put that to one side and let it dry uh, because I want to trans. If I just put that straight down, the green that's in the background wouldn't come off because it needs fresh paint, something liquidish to get it to move. I do have fresh paint though on the back of this banner so I thought oh I'll see if it comes off and into my journal so I've just popped it down in my journal there was a little bit of picture from the altered book of Frida one of her paintings that I wanted to keep so I've put a bit of scrap paper over that just given it a little press give it a little brayer with a clean brayer and let's see what we get oh nice and sitting next to it in the Casa Azul blue is actually the proper papel picado that I've used as collage. So I've um, medium that down. So although they're great for collage, they don't really work with this technique because once they get wet with the paint, they just tear when you lift them up and you kind of can still get the impression, but the poor little paper banner is destroyed. And I wanted to do, of course, some more <laughs> printing with this because I just, loved it and I thought how perfect would this be to share in my creative prompt month freeduary <laughs> in the Jane Davenport Mixed Media Art Group on Facebook and in my Viva La Vida online workshop that is all Frida Kahlo inspired. So I've got a big uh, book here it's from Layer Cake another online workshop it's all about background, uh, backgrounds and I've got tons of pages in here that are just color and waiting for their next little part of life. And I thought, okay, the paint on this is dry and it's ready for me to transfer across. The paint on the left is very, very absorbent. It's a watercolor paper. So I put some gesso down on it and let it dry off. And then as you can see, when I'm peeling it up, parts of it are not coming up, the print isn't coming up. Now, part of the whole thing with jelly plate printing is it's not a perfect process and you get this kind of result 
um, you know, it can be a bit random, but I really did want the print uh, on there so that I could see it, the face. So what I did was put down some matte medium next, rolled that out. I think I just had too much gesso on there. Uh, so I've put the matte medium on there and this is why I keep the acetate sheet on, that comes with your jelly plate. I keep that on one side so that it keeps it clean and I can see through the plate. That allowed me to line it back up again and I could just sort of you know, wiggle it around, get it almost, well, it looked absolutely perfect, um, replacement. Let that dry again. Uh, actually totally forgot about it, came back a week later <laughs> and oh well I'm doing this bit. So obviously I just didn't press down hard enough on that. I've got a little bit missing there but very delighted with how this looks. It looks so dimensional on the page when I move my pencils you'll see. And now I've got a gorgeous spread to work on that has this Frida, is she looking through a window? Is it a dream? Let's see where this art journal page takes me. For a start, I wanted to just complete the pattern that was there. So I'm just using my pencils just to loosely put the color that is missing back over it. And then as I work on the page, consider what I want to leave and what I want to reveal. So I could just leave this as is with just the, the banner that I used as the stencil, but I wanted to tinker with it, obviously. And I did have several versions. So, you know, if I don't like this, it's no big deal. I can go and play it with one of the other versions or just create a whole new one. But I, I'm using the LTQ, the License to Quill pen. This ink is amazing. It's waterproof. It dries quickly. It's really, really black. It goes on top of everything and just, and it's got that brush tip. Yum. So I can get little fine lines and push down, get a heavier line. I'm also using one of my Storytime white paint pens. They're very, very opaque. The ink, oh, delicious, deluxe. Love it. Wanted to make her stand out just a little, just a little bit. So I'm doing that with colored pencil. Then decided, oh, the line, no. So I'm blurring it just by fuzzing out the uh, line there with the pencil. Now I'm ready to work on the rest of this page. So on the background, I've got um, watercolor sprays, I've got jelly prints, I've got all sorts of different things. Like I said, it's from a, a workshop online about background. So <laughs> it's a it's a journal of backgrounds, all handmade. Uh, and then I've put it into a vintage cover that I've got at a flea market in France. So I thought, okay, I want this to extend across the page. And I just you just I work intuitively and I just felt that I wanted to do what I call a circle device that I very often put my text inside it's sort of akin to maybe like a thought bubble or a dream cloud it's just a container for the text and uh, I, I just I use this as a device for myself quite often I'm I've picked up my power pastels. So these are akin to the crayons that you had as a kid. They're just the grown up version. They just have more pigment. They're more easily blendable. They've got a mixture of wax and oil in them. The colors are gorgeous and they come in very cute too. So I'm dilly dallying, to be honest with you. <laughs> when I started working back on my Frida, but I've started to add some, just a little bit of detail into her. I don't want to take away too much from her being fairly stark though. I want her to stay looking stencilish, but I am going to add a little bit of, of detail to her so she just pops out of the page a little more. The next thing is to add some text. So all of that was procrastination. I worked out what I wanted to put on here and what I was going to use, what colors I thought might look good. I want to take some of the green from the left and bring that over uh, into the right hand side of the page. And um, yeah, just write out 
what I want to write out. That's a, a quote from Dolly Parton. Isn't that fabulous? Find out who you are and do it on purpose. It's not a Frida quote, but I think Frida would high five the beautiful Dolly Parton for that one. So I've still got my gorgeous backgrounds happening, but I want to add something on top of that. So I'm going to use aqua pastels. Uh, these are another crayon. Uh, and I know that crayons just sit up beautifully on backgrounds like this. These are a water soluble crayon. And the reason I picked these instead of the power pastels is they're just a little bit thinner. So, and I wanted to draw uh, a full little figure of Frida. Um, living on purpose, <laughs> finding out who she is, and then doing that as much as possible. So I'm using my LTQ pen, again, dries, just draws straight over the top of waxes and oils and just about anything else that you can throw at it. And it also has that nice fine tip and that it's such a dense black ink. I just love these pens just so much. The red lips I did with ultimate pen and the big flowers in her hair. And then I also used aqua pastels uh, probably threw in a little bit of power pastels and just drawing that little figure with the arm out and Frida dancing through life. A little bit of highlight with the Storytime paint pen. And oh, I feel like I've, I've made space for myself by doing having this little art session. Thanks for letting me share it with you. I've got the link for the banners below and just as a reminder all affiliate fees we donate to wildlife charities in Australia. Now go and do some art please. <laughs>